Hi everyone, this is Marcy from Prints and Paints. Today we are going to do this beautiful teal serpentine mandala. It is comprised of a beautiful spiral center with the illusions of a 3D effect and multiple different design elements that surround it. The metallics are a beautiful sheen of the Art Deco brand paint. So let's just jump right in. We're going to use this acrylic gesso quick drying matte finish. This acrylic gesso is going to a base coat for our MDF hardboard. We're going to use a soft bristle brush on a 23 inch hardboard. We're going to be applying a thin layer of this gesso. This is just going to act as a primer so that your base color does not seep into the hardboard. So now that we've gotten our MDF hardboard primed with our gesso, I like to go through and make sure that there are not any bumps or ridges that have formed. If I do, I would use some sandpaper to sand it out. I'm going to use a roller instead of a brush, but you can use either one. And I don't like to have brush strokes, so um, the roller can use a more smoother finish. We're going to use Teal Tuscan today instead of using a black background. We're going to liberally ply this onto our board. This is going to take a few times to create a nice layer, but once you have it, we'll meet back here soon. So now that we've found our center point, and we have our Tuscan Teal painted. We're going to use this ruler. We're going to use the tack that is included in the package. What you want to do is center it and put it in the zero point with the tack. Hover over your center's hole. And I'm going to use a little baby hammer to just slightly tack that in just so it's sturdy enough and then you're going to be able to move your ruler around. I'm also using Artesia's watercolor pencils in the color cream. These seem to be the best that get out your markings when you're finished with your product. I'm then going to move the ruler all around until I get my entire template of circles that I need. If you'd like to purchase this ruler, I have this available on my Etsy. Just look in the description for the link. So the next portion is going to be using the stencil that I have designed. This is going to be the center illusion part of our mandala. I've used this to cut out on my Cricut. It worked okay, but the bottom half did not cut out. I don't know if anyone ever has this issue. Please leave uh, comments down below if you ever run into this and how to fix it. Uh, but otherwise, this is the stencil. What we're going to do is I'm just going to take the stencil, copy it, and then flip it over and use the other half. I will make sure I have a downloaded version and hopefully a actual stencil for you. I lined up the center hole and I lined up the center large hole where the stencil begins with the circle on the mandala. I'm basically just going to take my watercolor pencil now and stencil out the entire portion of it on both sides. So now that I've gotten my stencil laid out with my watercolor pencil, we're going to focus on starting the center dot. We're going to use the color 
champagne gold and within deco arts metallic colors the stylist I'm going to use is the number 28 I believe this is the largest size you can get in the DIY mandala dotting tools we basically want to just make sure that we use the dotting tool to make a nice large round circle you may have to use this a few times around this larger circle in order to achieve it I sometimes like to take my stylist as well and push the paint around to make a more even dot so our next step is now going to need a number two dotting tool I'm using the ball tip stylist I am also using the Deco Arts primary red color. This is in a matte finish paint. So we're doing north, south, east, and west, and we're just going to make a few swishes. I'm going to get a nice amount of paint on my stylist. Let me zoom in so you can see. And I'm going to start at north and push down to the center of the circle and then I'm going to do another swoosh at an angle on the other side and then we're going to do one on all the other three dots I went ahead and filled in the other four negative spaces in place of the swooshes and now we're going to use our number five dotting tool and we're going to use the color champagne gold and we're just going to fill in the negative spaces now of the eight points of swooshes. Okay, so the next stage is going to be the swirls. The pattern is going to have similar dots that cascade down in smaller sizes. This is the look that I'm going to try to achieve with you today. I had two different ideas as I was brainstorming. I realized I want to use the multicolored line instead of the single color tones only because I realized if I do a single color I could come up short with having three colors or I might need an extra color and a lot of mathematics would be involved in trying to figure out how many colors I actually wanted to use here I think having the multicolors will create a nice pattern element as you taper yourself out from there too so the colors I'm going to use slightly different from what you're seeing because I switched out the matte colors for metallics so that matte is a ice blue color for example I want to stick with all metallics and not just have both so the first color we're going to use is the Deco Art Peacock Pearl and those are going to be the top two dots the color is very similar to the background but it is a sheen so it will show up the next color which is the four dots is going to be the metallic ice blue by Folk Art Okay, the next four dots is going to be Deco Arts Metallic Copper. And then the next and last color is going to be the Deco Art Mink Pearl. This is similar to a champagne color. It has slightly like 
a pinkish side like a rose gold but not so warm toned. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the dotting tools we're going to use. So uh, the first dotting tool we're going to use it for one dot only and so the top color is the peacock pearl. We're going to use the size 14 for the first dot and then you're going to flip it around and you're going to do the next dot 13. We'll go through this as we go along with the step-by-step -step instructions. The next one is going to be the metallic ice blue and you're going to use the size 12 and 11 and then you're also going to use the size 10 and 9. Moving into the metallic copper color, we're going to use the numbers 8 and 7 and then also 6 and 5. And then the last color, once we get to the metallic mink pearl, we're going to use the size 4 and we're going to do the number four twice and then the number three we're going to do it three times and then we're going to use the stylus number two and then you're basically going to use the number two to finish out taper off walk your dots whatever you call that the reason I chose to do four and three um, using it more than once is because when you're walking with the number two it's very hard to finish tapering off those dots at the end. I barely had enough paint to have at the end. So that's why we're going to repeat four twice and the number three dotting tool we're going to do it three times. Okay so I'm going to work with one color at a time we're going to start with the peacock pearl first. We're going to get our number 14 stylus tool and we're going to zoom in so you can see. Okay. So we have this mapped out and 14. We're going to dot it in our paint. So we get a nice bubble on the end. I did thin down the paint with some matte fluid. So at the curve where it starts, I'm going to do one single dot for the 14. And we're going to do that on every single curves. And then this one, every single one all the way around. So now the next portion that we're going to do is the number 13. And once again, we're going to get a nice little bubble on the end of our dotting tool. And we're going to dot it right next to the size 14 dot. And we're going to try to stay within that curve. You don't want to try to go outside of it. You want to stay with inside of that curve. So now we finished our 14 and 13 dots. We are done with the Peacock Pearl. The next color we're going to move into is the Ice Blue by Folk Art. It's a lighter color blue. 
and we're going to use 12 and 11. So same concept. We're going to dot right next to the last size. So this is going to be number 12. And we're just going to want to follow the curve. It's very simple, very simple technique. Okay. So now that we've finished our size 12, we're going to work on our size 11 dotting tool. And then we're also going to finish this out with a time lapse with the numbers 10 and 9. So now that we finished our four dots of ice blue, we're going to jump into the four dots of the metallic copper color. I just have that mixed in my tray. I diluted it a bit with the fluid medium and we're going to do the dotting tools eight and seven. So once again, just try to follow the curve. I will zoom in so you can see the progress of how this works. This is how the curve will start and I follow within the curve. So our next dots will start to fall and because they are tapered off, they will be able to fit within that line. Okay, so the next colors, I jumped a little bit ahead. I went ahead and I did the two copper colors. They were the number eight and seven. And then you also have to do six and five as well. Okay, so we're moving on to our last color here. We finished our copper. We're going to now move into our mink pearl color. We are going to use the dotting tools number four and three. Now remember when you do your four, we're going to do that three times. And then we're also going to do the number three dotting tool three times as well. Okay, so finally, we've come to our last part. We finished our four 
NR3 dotting tools. You should have a total of six of them. You're now going to use the number two dotting tool. Now you can use the ball tip stylus like I'm using, or you can use the uh, number two white DIY mandala dotting tool. You're going to want to get enough on your dotting stylus. Okay. And I think we can do a few of them as well just like we did with the four and three because we do have a quite amount of space to taper off and walk the dots. So we have four, five, six, seven. I think we're gonna do six and then walk the dots. Six even gets a little bit tight with the dots. So I think we're gonna go with six dots for the number two and then we'll walk the rest of them. So number seven dot will be walked. So we finally finished our centerpiece. This is our three dimensional, I call it a serpentine uh, design. Those dots will look a little bit different once they're dry. They will probably flatten out a bit, but I was able to pull out the walking dots and that cascading look to it. And it really did come out very beautiful. Um, if you stare at it in different directions, it, it does definitely make it look like it's moving, which is a great um, design element. We even have about four or five inches on the outside here to work with different designs. In the meantime, we are going to add one more small detail to these dots. I like the little details that can be added to an element. So. I'm going to get my stylus number one, the smallest one I can get. And I'm going to use the champagne gold for the deco art. It's the same color that you use in the center. And then I'm going to dot the outside. And in between each dot, I'm going to do one small dot. Now I know this seems very tedious. However, it really does tie things in nicely when it's finished. I really love intricate details and I think um, adding just those extra touches to such a beautiful piece of artwork uh, really pays off. I might not do them all the way down. I might end as I get to the mink pearl. I'm not sure. Um, we'll start to see how it looks as we go together. I don't want these little dots to start blending in with the small tapered dots.
So I decided to stop at the third one in of the mink pearl. I feel like that is a good ending point as the other dots start to get extremely small and then you have a hard time even adding the dots to these corners. Okay, so for the next section, I use the number six dotting tool and I basically added one dot around each section of the red swooshes. I use the color peacock pearl as well. Now for the next section, we're going to basically frame out this area by adding a series of dots around the large blue ones. We're going to use the color champagne gold and we're going to use the number six dotting tool. You're going to want to place it on the next line right after the large blue dots. Now for the next section, I'd like you to get a T-square out if you own one or just a long flat ruler and make sure that your mandala is up against a flat background, whether it's a wall or a side of a table, etc. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to like some horizontal and vertical lines. We're going to line up our ruler onto the center dot of the mandala and the other side is up against a flat background as to act as a T-square. If you do have one, please use it. And I'm going to make a vertical line on that side. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do it again on that side you also want to try to line up each line so the one that's on the left side I want it to write, line up with the right side etc. Take your time with this and make sure that your lines are just nice and straight. So now that we finished our lines, you're going to have a total of eight points. This will result in a vertical line, a horizontal line, and two lines that crisscross down the center to form an X. Don't finish yet and put your ruler away. You're going to add a few more points. So in between each line, you're going to make another line that's centered. This will now give you a total of 16 points. So the next point is that we're going to focus on is the horizontal line on this side. This is where I will work so you can see what I'm doing. I'll be able to zoom in hopefully and you'll be seeing a more detailed version. We're going to use the red and the copper for this one. So to remember your red is your primary red deco art. It's the same red that we used in the center of swooshes. We're also using the copper metallic by Decor. And then you're also going to use the size 16 dotting tool. What we're gonna do is just dab the dotting tool into the red, get a nice amount on your dotting tool this is a rather large dotting tool, so it's going to take a few times. I use a little bit of medium fluid also to thin out my paints. 
and then we're just going to dot on the east side and we're going to dot in the center line so I'm dotting in that center line okay and then I'm also going to dot down the center of the horizontal line and we're going to do the dots on every other line Okay, so now that we've got our red dots finished, we're going to do the cascading dots. We're going to do three rows of them. We're going to start with a middle size. So I'm going to use the green dotting tool. It's an equivalent to, I'd say, probably a four size dotting tool if you're using the DIYs yeah a four and then from there we're gonna go up and do five and six these will be those center dots and then you will walk the dots from them we are going to use the metallic copper again and so we're just gonna dot the center and then I'm going to walk the dots down. I'm only going to stop at the gold. I'm not going to go over it and into the, the end of it just until you get to the end of it. And then again I dot the center and then I dot cascade and walk the dots down the other side. So that's your first row. I think we're going to go with another color not keep it all copper so we're going to go with the mink pearl color and I'm going to use a number five dotting tool so the difference between this one now is when I do the dotting in the dot in the center I'm gonna dot right below the second one the first one with the number five okay so it's slightly bigger than the first one but now I'm finished with that size dotting tool and then I'm going to use use a smaller dotting stylist the step down from the green is the blue so I'd say that's probably about a size 3 in the stylist for the DIY mandalas So we're going to dot and walk those dots down. Try to stay consistent. Work slowly so that you follow your curve. You don't need to rush this. Remember when placing your dots, you want to create those little Mickey ears, remember? They want to be slightly above the center dot we're going to go up in a size and we're going to do the size 6 we're going to go back with copper so we're just going to repeat the copper color Now remember this is a size 6 dotting tool and we're using copper. It is a slightly larger size. And then what you're going to do is because it's a bigger dot you're going to use the green which would be like a size 4 stylist for the DIY mandala dotting tools 
and then we're just going to walk those dots down as well. Follow the curve till you get to the gold. And that is all you need to do. We're also going to add one more, I think, because it could use a little bit more space. So we're going to add one more. And so we're going to go up with number seven. Once we're finished with this, we'll do that to all of the other seven. So remember, we're only doing eight points. We're doing the ones with the red dots. So the next size down, we're stick. We're going to stick with the green, but just make sure you get a nice amount of paint on this one, so it makes a nice big dot, just like that. And then walk those dots down as well. If it's something smaller, you might have extremely small dots at the end when it tapers off. So stick with the larger tool dotting tool size. And that's going to be your finished product. So now that we've gotten our, our eight points filled in, we're going to do the same design for the additional negative spaces behind. The only difference is that we're going to do it backwards. So again, we're going to take our number 16 dotting tool. We're going to dot in our red paint. And where we left off on that line, it should be the um, fifth line down on that center line. You're going to dot so it touches the fifth. So you're going to be in between four and five li lines. We're going to do that for every single one. And then you're going to do the same concept. So we're going to do the copper, the mink pearl, copper, and mink pearl. Same dotting tools that you did before. So next one's going to be the green, size 4. I'm going to use the copper. If you want to work facing so that you're facing the other direction, you can. It might be a little hard to reach, but I'm going to walk it towards myself. So a dot down the center and then walk it towards myself. And I'm going to stop at the fifth line. So dot the center and then walk the dots towards the fifth line. Try to keep your curve following the circle. Let me move my camera a little bit so we can see it better. Here we go. There we go. So now we can see it a little bit better. So now we're going to go with the next dotting tool. We're going to go with the number five dotting tool. We're going to use the mink pearl. And remember, we're just going to dot the first dot with the mink pearl.
and then we're going to take the blue dotting tool and that's a size 3. If you don't have these it's a size 3 in the DIY mandala dotting tools. Forgive my camera for not being able to focus. It likes to focus on random things. But we get the idea. Here we go. So you really just want to focus on following your curve so that it stays uniformed. The next one is the size 6. We're going to do copper. So dot down the six, dot the six down the center. Now we're going to use the green because our dots were getting larger. So we're going to up it with the green and we're going to walk that dot down only up to the fifth line. Again on this side, just like that. And the last color, it should now fall on the, the first line after the gold dots, and it's a number seven. And this is the mink pearl once again. We're going to dot that on that line, or close enough to it. And then with our green tool, which is the number four, get a lot of paint and then we're gonna walk that down as well and then that's going to be it for this you're going to do that on every space so you should have seven more to do So we finished our 16 point designed walking dots. What we'll do is we'll probably come back and possibly do something in the negative spaces, but in the time being, we're going to tie in this portion of our design elements. I always like to enclose them with doing a series of dots. So we're gonna use the peacock pearl we're going to use a size 10 and we're basically just going to do a row of the blue dots. So we're going to dot around the perimeter of this design. So the six line down, the next line down, we're just going to do a series of simple dots all the way around. Okay, so we've gotten our blue dots around the peacock pearl color. Uh, now we're going to focus on those negative spaces in between the walking dots. Okay, what I think we're going to do is a bit of a long swoosh that can connect to the top portion and then it's also going to swing down into the opposite direction. We're going to start with a size 10, 9, and 8 we're going to use. 10 is going to be where the tapered off look will be. 
Okay, so focus on the smaller part of the dots that walk, were walked. I will zoom in so you can see this. So, get your number 10. Get a small stylist as well because we want to pull that paint. And we're going to use our Ice Blue by Folk Art. And I've diluted a little bit with the uh, fluid medium. So we're going to just dot in the lower corner. And then with our stylist, I'm using a size one stylist. It's the smallest I have. At an angle, pull from the center and then start to move yourself out from there so that it becomes a nice teardrop shape. And you wanna curve it. So we're not gonna go straight up with it. We're gonna wanna curve it a tad. I'm gonna add a little bit more paint. And use, use the Mandela dotting tool almost as an eyedropper. You just wanna touch the paint to it and then you wanna lightly pull up that paint and then as you pull up you use light pressure so that it tapers off you just really want to make sure that the end is a lot bigger than the top portion obviously that's the first one The next one we're going to do is nine. Nine, we're going to go about halfway up, about to the second line up. Two lines. Dot a nice amount of paint and pull. Pull from, I'm going to pull. So I just want to focus on curving that. Just like that. Good. Okay. And then the last one we're going to do is the number eight. And then this one is going to fall about the third line up. About in between the third and fourth line. This one I did on the fourth line. And this one you're just gonna pull more at an angle sideways. More straightened on. Because you're already at that 45 degree angle. So, so it should look something like that. You're gonna do that on the other side as well. And then for the other ones, you're going to want to just do it opposite. Yeah, so we're just going to mirror it. So you'll have the large coming down and then the middle and so on.
Okay, so I went ahead and I skipped the time lapse for that particular portion. I wanted to try to keep this video under a certain amount of time frame. So if you need to study this, please pause the video and check it out on how it's supposed to look. Again, you're just really just mirroring these whooshes on either side. All right, so the next color that we're going to go with is the Splendid Gold in the Deco Art Metallics. We're going to work with the size 9 dotting tool and also a smallest stylus, the size 1. We're going to create more swooshes this time. On every tick line, there are 16 of them. This is just going to be a basic swoosh. Uh, we're going to do like a teardrop style. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a dot near the blue dots and we're going to pull away from that portion. Let's zoom in. All right, so So from the blue, the third line down, you're going to pull towards. So you're going to dot it, get a nice amount of paint on that dot, and then you're going to pull down to the third area, to the third line. And these are just simple pulling from either direction and into a nice upside down teardrop shape. We're also going to do a dot at the bottom as well. So now that we've finished our gold swooshes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the number five dotting tool. And we're also going to use the same color, splendid gold, and dot each tip with the next line down, the number five. Let's zoom out a little bit. So we finished our teardrops all the way around. They look like little exclamation points. <laughs> We're going to find something to fill in these negative spaces. Um, I think what we're going to do is a series of three dots. And uh, we're going to tie it in with something else, I think. We're, we'll see. For now, what I think we're going to do we're going to use the mink pearl. Yeah. And the number 10 dotting tool. So the fourth line down from the blue is where we're going to put our number 10 dot. So, so you want to put it on the third. We're going to do something dotting on that, that last line there. So, sorry. So let's do fourth. My bad. So 
so yes. Number 10, flip it over. Let's do a size nine. And uh, try to imagine a state straight line so you're stacking them up so they look like a snowman. And then you're going to do eight on the top. It will be at the top, just like so. And you just want to make sure that this little element piece that we're doing is in the center between each of these uh, swooshes, okay? I'm going to do that one all the way around. And we're going to do a little bit of a walk of um, some dots when we're finished. Wonderful. So we went, we finished our three tier dots. This is what it should look like. The next thing we're going to do is the bottom half of it. Let me try to move my camera so I can zoom in to your liking so you can see it. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my number two stylist and I'm going to just walk my dots. I'm going to use the same color and I'm going to start at the bottom and just walk them and I'm only doing the bottom large dot. So just like that. You don't want to dip it back in your tray each time. You just want to dip it once and then work those dots until they get smaller. Every single one large dot we're going to do this one for. So we finished our three tier dots with our cascading walking dots. Now we're going to tie it in with another border. So we're going to do very tiny dots that go around in a border. Let me show you what I mean. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Move my camera a little bit, sorry. The, the mandala gets really large to where it's hard to see sometimes. Okay, so we're going to use the Splendid Gold again, and we are using our number two stylist again. And just on the, the same line where everything has ended, the fourth line down, we're going to dot small dear, series of dots. I'm almost making like a strand of them, sort of like a, a necklace, like a pearl necklace. We're just going to follow this all the way around on the same exact line. When I get to the dots, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to go over them. And I'll just pick up on the other side where I left off. Just like so. And we're going to do this all the way around. And one more quick note, as I'm doing these around, I'm also going to walk up the dots that surround the round large dots, uh, like so.
So we finished our gold all the way around with the small dots. I also went ahead and did a, another gold. I did the champagne gold instead of the splendid gold. And I used a smaller stylist. I used the green one. I dotted and pulled towards and then also dotted the, the dot below it. We're going to stick with the same stylist. So this is a new color. I'm using matte based folk art and it's navy blue. It's fairly dark. So we're going to do a few swooshes with this. And then once we're finished with that and it's dry, we're going to take the champagne gold and we're going to go over it just as like the uh, exclamation swoosh dot looks like. So there'll be two layers to those colors. So you just want to get a nice amount of paint on your stylist and you're going to dot next to the gold dot and you're curve it all the way up like that. You're going to do three of them. So one on the other side to mirror the same, same uh, length. Make sure I get enough paint. And then where the next line goes up, you're going to do it again. So it's slightly getting tapered up at an angle. Just like so. Good. And then once again, the last one we're going to, I don't want to do it on the next line. Maybe, maybe I will. We're going to do like a little bit below the line. All right. Because that's a sharp curve to try and get. And I still want my curve. I don't want it to be straight on. So right below the third line up. And we're going to do that. We're going to do that in between every swoosh that we have. Okay, so now that we finished our navy blue swooshes, we're gonna let it dry and we're gonna go back and use a smaller stylist and put the gold on top of that. So they'll be having two layers to those swooshes. The next thing we're gonna do is just a series of dots. Just like these rows, I like to change out my design um, and keep things bordered. So I'm going to use the size 9 stylist in the primary red deco art. And basically, we're just going to do in between the lines. We're going to do it on the next line. Let me see if I can zoom in. So the very next line you're going to want to place the dot centered on that line. I don't want it to be touching those mink pearl colors. So we're going to be on the line. Just like that. So just make sure when you're dotting, you're eyeballing that your dot is staying centered on the line. We'll do a time lapse and do the entire thing.
Okay, so we finished our red dots. We're going to move into the copper metallic. And we're going to use the same size dotting tool, the size 9. And we're basically going to dot in between the two dots. So, so you see how you have that little curve, right, in between where I'm pointing? That's where your dot's going to fall. So let me show you. So just like that. And then we'll obviously do this for every single dot. They're going to be a little spaced apart. We um, are actually going to do a small dot in the center of each one to tie them all together. Okay guys, we're getting down to the last few inches of our mandala. We're going to go back and do a few more uh, details before we get too much wet paint and we can't dot over that. So the next things we're going to do is put the gold over the navy blue sushes that have dried and those small gold dots that we have there, we're going to add those to some accents to some of the other dots as well. These blue dots right here, we're going to add the um, those small gold dots as well to that. And we're going to do the gold on these swooshes as well. So we're sticking with the champagne gold, not splendid gold, but champagne gold. It's a subtle gold. It's not so yellow. Mm -hmm. There's a difference in the tones. And we also have the mink pearl. The mink pearl's more like a pinkish hue. So we're sticking with champagne gold. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add some to my paint dish. I'm going to dilute it slightly with my medium fluid. And mix that around. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is the swooshes. Because we use the green, which is an equivalent to a size 4, we're going to go down in a size so that we can still see the blue. So we're going to go with a number 2. You don't want it to be overpowering to where you don't see the blue. You just want some highlight on top of it. So zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're working with. And we're going to get enough paint on our number two stylist. And then you're going to want to dot in the center of the bottom portion like that to make a dot. And then you're going to 
pull that up quickly. Try to make a more consistent swoosh when you do that, but it's okay if it's not perfect. Um, the idea is to just add this nice top bubble layer to it. If they don't reach all the way up to the top, that's okay as well. Just try your best to keep pulling as you go and hope that you get that nice um, swoosh. Just make sure you don't have too much paint on your stylus, otherwise it may glob and you might have to erase it. All right, so I'm gonna do that for all the swooshes. So the number one stylist we're gonna use for the small dots. So you're gonna slightly tap it with the paint and you're just gonna do a small, tiny, tiny dot. Now this may be tedious, but the detail that you pull through looks really wonderful when you're finished. So every, every dot. We'll do a time lapse. All right, so we finished our gold swooshes and the small dots. I went ahead and I did um, some of the dots on the copper as well. So the number nine copper dots I did with a number two stylist. And I did the champagne gold and did the dots in between to give it like a strand like look. Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, so you've, if you've stopped the video and you did your gold dots um, in between the copper ones, we're now ready to move on and we're going to use the Folk Art Metallic Ice Blue. And we're going to use the number 12 dotting tool. For the time being, on every line tick mark, you should have the 16 of them, remember. We're going to dot the number 12 dot. So remember to get a nice amount on your dotting tool. And not the line down, but the, so the second line down on your tick mark where it's centered, you're going to dot the number 12 dotting tool. Okay, just like that. Okay, and we're gonna do that for each one. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do in between the two as well. I prefer to do the ticks mark so that you can get a feel for where your center is between those. So let's do the 16 marks first and we'll come back and do the center ones in between.
Okay guys, so we finished our metallic ice blue dots. We're going to work it and focus on the negative spaces in between them. We're going to take our number six dotting tool and we're going to use the peacock pearl color. And what we're going to do first is on the center line where the large dots rest, we're going to dot with a number six, the peacock blue. So try your best to center between the two dots. And then once we get these down, we're going to add a top coat with a navy blue, I think. And then we're going to do a small fantail as well. What I mean by fantail is that we're going to use the same color and we're going to use our number two stylist. And at the top, close to the copper dots, we're going to dot and then pull that down. Okay, let's try to zoom in so you can see it a little better. I apologize, it's a little hard to zoom in because the uh, mandala is getting so large and it's not centered. Okay, so we're doing one on either side, three all together, and below we'll do the same thing. We're going to mirror it. So the next line, third line down, you're going to want to dot a little bit below it, actually, just to get that nice um, swoosh. We want to have that tail to the swoosh. Mm -hmm. There we go. So just like that, that's what it's going to look like. And every single one in between the dot, the, the large dots, we're going to do that first, okay? So we've finished our fantails, our small mini fantails, and we're going to focus on the inside of the, around the dots. So we're going to focus on a few um, swooshes around them. We're going to do a combination of colors of the mink pearl and the ice blue. So, so we're going to do three on either side and there'll be side swooshes that hug around the dot. So the first color we're going to do is the mink pearl and we're going to use the blue stylist which is about a size three. And you're going to start at the bottom right corner and work your way around and you're just going to curve around. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. I would probably do these first on each one because then I'll have to keep cleaning my tool off. So in the time lapse I'll do these first and then I'm going to go in with the ice blue on the center. So right next to it, not above it, not below it, but next to it, you're going to pull up. Just like that. And then so I would do the ice blue next after I do the mink. And then once you're finished with that, you're going to do the mink pearl on the last one. And this is just going to be a filler between those 
colors of the fantail and the dot. Okay, so we finished our swooshes all the way around and our fantails are finished as well. The next step we're going to do before we close off the area with the dots, we're going to go in and focus on the dot that's in the center of the fantail. That is the peacock pearl color that we had. And what we're going to do is take our navy blue that we had, which was the folk art brand. Okay. And we're going to use our number four stylus tool. So we're going down two sizes. The dot with the precock blue was six. And then so we're going to go down to a four. The paint is straight out of the bottle. I'm not diluting this one. And I'm going to lightly dot the center of the peacock blue dot. Okay. We're going to do that to every single one. And when we finish with a time lapse, we'll meet you back. Okay, so we got in our old navy blue and it's dotting on the fantails. We still have some left on our tray, so we're gonna add a few more accents to different areas. Because I incorporated the navy blue in such a late stage of it I want to go back and add some navy blue in the beginning area somewhere in the center I don't want to mess with my spiral per se but I think we need to tie in some more navy blue in the beginning so what I think we're going to do is the gold dots we're going to double dot them so we're going to do navy blue on top of the gold and then this way it becomes more cohesive. It co becomes more of a flow with your colors. So what we're going to do is use a number six dotting tool and we're going to use the navy blue that we had and we're going to carefully dot because the dots on the bottom are wet. We're going to carefully dot the center. If you want to let the paint dry on the bottom part that you just did, please do so and then come back and you can dot them. Um, I'm just going to do this for the sake of the video. We're going to get this done. So all the way around, we'll do this on each one. All right, welcome back. So now we want to focus on what we were going to do is to tie in and enclose those um, fantails and the swooshes. We're going to use the champagne gold yet again, and we're going to use the number nine stylist for this one. I'm basically going to dot on the next line down, okay? 
just to give it a little bit of space so that you're not on top of those uh, elongated uh, fan tails that come down. So we're just going to hit the next line down from there and we're going to go all the way around and do a time lapse of this, okay? So we finished our gold dots, the champagne gold. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our 16 points. Hopefully your lines aren't fading. Mine are starting to fade a little bit just from putting my hands on it. But we want to focus on those 16 points. It's the same concept as the red circles that we did. So we're basically replicating those red circles again. We're again going to use the size 16, which is the same size we used and we're going to use the primary red color and we're just going to do one dot and we're going to do it right below where the gold starts where the gold ends there okay and we're going to do it right on the next line and we're going to do one for each one all the way around Okay guys, so we're practically done here. Um, once we finish our red dots here, we're gonna go back to our ice blue and we're going to use the number six dotting tool. And basically, very simply, we're going to dot one dot right below the red dots all the way around, okay? This is kind of the ending tips. We're going to add a little bit of, um, we're not going to fill this in. We're going to leave a little bit of naked space on the outside, but we're just going to add these light blue dots. All right, guys. So we finished the red and the ice blue dots. Uh, those are finished. We're going to focus on the gold ones really quick, and we're just going to add one more little added detail, and we're going to use our copper color, and we're going to use our number two stylist, and we're basically just going to dot one small dot in between the bottom part of it. Just the bottom. We're not going to do on either side, I think. We're going to do one little dot. So just like that. And we're going to do that all the way around. Okay guys, hi. So we are finally finished with our mandala. We are done with our teal serpentine mandala. I added a few more touches. So if you want to do this, by all means, please do so. I just didn't record the tutorial part of it. At the very end, I did add a few more accent pieces to it. I used this puffy 3D gold metallic paint. You can buy it at any craft store or Walmart, even sells it. Um, and I like using these to add some uh, large beveled type of dots. So to look closely, I did the center piece with the gold as well. I also did them on the 
navy blue dots so gold navy blue and then gold they look like little pearls almost which is really nice I also did them on the three tiers of the dots and then I also did them on the the reds okay and so these are just self control because it has a tip to it so you just squeeze on the paint and um, I centered the dots so but it does bring in a nice like added bonus touch to it so if you want to do that please do so so we're going to zoom out this is what it should look like if you paint it along with me um, it's very very beautiful and I hope you all love it as much as I did I really enjoyed teaching this and I hope you enjoyed learning it and uh, till next time happy dotting guys and uh, we'll see you soon for the next tutorial bye